Hobson, what's good? What's up, man? Everything's good. Can't complain over here. Now, you've been on Vlad TV before, but this is the first time I'm actually doing the interview myself. So. Yeah, yeah. First you time know, meeting you, so no pleasure doubt. to meet you. Welcome. Um, you had a tweet a while back, which I thought was, was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were talking about something else, but at one point you said, I'm a self-made millionaire, own my own label, and have a beautiful house and girlfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true. It's a pretty big statement right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially me coming from Panorama City, you know, not many people get to see those type of things and see the things that I've seen. So, yeah, I'm very thankful. Was this something that, like, as a kid, you said, all right, like, I'm going to be a millionaire when I grow up and I'm going to have a big house and I'm going to have a beautiful girlfriend and have my own company and everything else like that? Or did it sort of evolve over time? You know, as a, as a kid, it, and I don't know if you felt this way as a kid, but everybody always says these words like, when I'm, when I'm grown and I'm rich one day, when I have a million dollars one day, this and that, like everybody just always assumes they're gonna reach that point. But I've, I've always been aware like I had to do something to make me reach that point, you know? So I, I always pictured myself being wealthy and you know, being able to travel the world. I didn't know how, if it was gonna be through skateboarding, through acting, through um, doing voiceovers for cartoons or animation or music. I didn't know what it was gonna be, but I knew it was going to be one of those things and you know when I was around 14 years old I, I just realized that it was it was more than likely going to be music that took me to that level and I knew within myself that I wasn't going to stop until I you know found out the formula that worked for me to allow me to reach that point of success that I wanted to be at and you know and I'm at a, and I'm at a level now you know where I'm very comfortable you know I can I'm I'm good I I found my flow, I found my lane. There's still levels that I, I want to reach, but yeah, I, I, since I was a younger kid, I kind of had an idea that this was all going to be my life because I just couldn't see myself working at McDonald's. Yeah, well, I, I think it's important because I think everybody wants to be rich. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody says, I, I aspire to be poor and barely scraping by. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, like I remember as a kid saying, okay, like, this is something that I'm, I'm working on every day. This mm -hmm. is something I really want, and I'm gonna start as early as possible, and I'm gonna keep trying to figure shit out. And I, I just think that you have, to, you have to start early, and it has to be a serious drive. It can't just be something that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that's what a lot of people get twisted, you know? And, and I see a lot of people who are in like high school or even their early college days, that everybody keeps telling them, oh, you got time, you got time. But like, I'm 30 years old now, and this is, and this is, and this is the time that it happened for me off of me working on it since I was 14, you know what I'm saying? So it depends, I mean, and, and you know, everybody's life, is, everybody's life is different, you know, so I'm not saying it has to, there's no time, uh, there's no age that, it, that success has to come at, you know, it's just, um, but I, I'm under the impression that I don't have time because I, I look at it as I'm only getting older, so, mm -hmm. um, and I'm aware that it's gonna take, you know, a good eight to 10 years, maybe 15 years for something to really work out realistically to, um, you know, put all that work into something, so. I just started when I was 14. I, I just became aware and I was like, this is, I'm just gonna keep going and until this day. Rapping's been my thing every single day. Well, at what age did you become a millionaire? At what age? Like um, 28, 27, 28. Yeah. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. So in your 20s, in your late yeah, 20s, yeah, late, late you became 20s. a millionaire. Yeah. Self made millionaire mm -hmm, with your exactly. own company. Yep. So uh, how did you end up starting uh, Funk Volume? Started it in like it, it was originally my my rap name so i mean hobson has always been my rap name and then the hobson thing wasn't working for me but this is just fresh out of high school i didn't have any clue what was going on with mm -hmm. music so i was like man I, I need something that's just gonna be different so i was i was gonna turn myself into this little like um adidas backpacking mc break dancer type dude so funk volume i thought that was the perfect name for me and I was just going to be on some b-boy type shit and um, I, I made a few songs under the name of Funk Volume. The songs were horrible <laughs> um, <laughs> and that um, then this was back this was like in 2006 2007 so that didn't work out but then I was just like man I, I think Funk Volume would actually be a dope label name and you know I just went back to Hobson and I just started um, yeah, rep, make, I went to the mall in Panorama City. There's a little, I mean, a swap meet up there in Panorama City. And I, was, I would get these t-shirts made 
with Funk Volume printed on it. And me and all my homies from the neighborhood who rap, we'd all we'd always rep Funk Volume and you know walk around with the T-shirts on and just have a little crew. And this is way before like the Funk Volume that the that the world knows. These there was there was members of Funk Volume that I don't know what they're doing in life now, but they were part of it way back in the day. So. Um, yeah, start as a rap name, and then I wanted to make it into a label, and then you know I've I've known Swizz, who he's he was part of the label. He went to high school with me, and that's where I met him at in a little freestyle cipher, and you know we started rapping together. And then he, over time, you know he asked if he could be a part of it, and you know I said of course, why not? It'd be dope to have him on the team. And then me and him just start rocking with it. Was just it it turned to just me and him being on Funk Volume, and then he wanted to bring his brother in and. That, and that was around 2008, I think. And his brother came in. You know, he wanted to add structure to the to what we were doing. And then from there, you know, we just started kind of putting out mixtapes and albums and building the name. So, at what point did Damien Ritter come in? He came in 2008. That's that was that was Swiss brother Damien. Oh, Ritter. that's his brother. Yeah, Swiss brother Damien Ritter. Yeah, my okay. bad. Okay. Yeah, so that was 2008. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and how did it work out? Were you guys all equal partners or? Yeah, we were equal partners. So I, re I remember the first the first meeting that we had, um, and this was like 2008 ish. We because um, he said he wanted to help out. So me, him, and Swizz, we met at at Swizz's house at at the kitchen table, and we were talking about like the the splits and how we're gonna do everything. And Dame had asked me what he was like. So what what do I envision? Like how do I see the percentage thing going? And I told him more like you know in an 80-20 split with, you know, as far as ownership goes. And he said if it was going to be that, then it, it's not going to be worth his time and he's not going to be able to invest all of his time into it and he's going to have to do other things. And he wanted more, he wanted 50-50. And so, you know, me being kind of a, I guess you'd say an ignorant, stupid artist at the time where all I just was focusing on is rap and not the business side, I agreed. And we, you know, so then from there, from there on out, we started putting out music, and you know, we were splitting everything in half. Um, okay. Yeah. So you guys had a big fallout recently. Yes, we did. You made a diss song about him. Yeah. <laughs> Ill, Ill mind eight. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting making a diss song about someone who doesn't actually rap themselves mm -hmm. so yeah. it's not like he's gonna do a diss song back yeah yeah it, it wasn't and it wasn't it's not I, I wasn't making any intentions it I, I make songs about my life so that that's a that's a situation of my life it's, it's just my diary so if I you know I'm not I, I don't make it, it I, didn't, I didn't word it in a way where I'm lyrically trying to demolish him in a, in a way lyrically I would just I was just stating the facts of, of what I went through so I mean yeah people make songs about their life that that's what Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's what it was. So you, you compared him to Jerry Heller? Yes. Uh, you said he had gambling problems? Yes. Uh, there was, I guess, you mentioned some conflict of interest, being that he was a manager, owner, and accountant. Mm hmm yep. And uh, I guess there were some issues with money? Yes, a lot of issues with money. Okay. Uh, how long ago did the song come out? So it came out about a week ago. About a week um, ago. Yeah, on, okay. on the yeah eighth of oh. yeah eighth of March. Have you talked to him since the song came out? I haven't talked. I haven't talked to him since have December. You, okay. Have you talked to anyone who who got his reaction from the song? Um, nobody's specific. I don't think anybody who is around him would tell me his reaction. You know, I mean, I all I see is what everybody else sees online. You know, okay. so I I don't know what his facial expression was. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but but basically, this is your business partner. Yeah. And when things fall apart, everyone points the finger at each other. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you could deny that you guys actually had quite a bit of success together. Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely had success together. Yes, for sure. You know, and I mean, can you honestly say that this guy did not contribute to any of that success? He contributed, but what he contributed was you know, not what he thinks he contributed. So he, I mean, he thinks he contributed a lot more than what he did do. What did he do? What, if you look at the significant things that he did, what so, was that? So, okay, so let's just, for example, I, I have, I've had an assistant, Jamie, who's been my assistant for the past four years. And she, 
you know, she started um, working with me, helping me out with things that I needed. But she, and then she also started helping, helping out with Funk Volume, helping with touring, helping with setting up the merchandise, any, anything Funk Volume needed. Um, but Dame always claimed that he, he was so valuable. Now, Jamie, she, comes from, she, she doesn't come from the music world whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The moment Funk Volume split and we separated, instantly Jamie took over his role and, and does it flawlessly. She has no, no experience in the music industry other than what she's learned from you know, being around me and just Funk Volume. But, there, but so instantly, because the, and this is why, because it's just sending emails, it's, 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 just, it's just playing a middleman going, if someone says, hey, I want Hobson to do a show, he goes, okay, let me ask Hobson. But it's just playing that middleman. It's just, okay. it's just, and, that, and it's just, yeah, it's just But she's had four years learning how to do this. No, no, but what I'm saying is, but it, it's, it's something that, it, it's very, it's a very simple task. It's as simple mm -hmm. as just staying on top of phone calls and emailing. There is no, um, there's nothing, there's nothing more to it, you know. It, it's not him being in the studio with me, helping me with, with the beats. It's not him coming up with marketing plans going, hey, wear these white contacts here. Do this because this might help your brand. It, it's, it's nothing like that. Okay. It, it, it was all, it was all just as simple as, just, just like when you hire somebody at McDonald's to work the cash register. They, they, you, you, you right, can't. but at the time, you did not have the money to hire somebody, you know, when you were first started, you didn't have yeah. the money to hire someone who had the, you know, the expertise on, on how to do this. Yeah. He came in as a partner and basically did it for free until the money came in and then it got split. Yeah. I mean, is that, is that a fair, a fair no, assessment? No, now when he, now when he came in, you know, him, him providing the structure, you know, yeah. um, providing the money to, to build the website okay. is, is very, very beneficial because okay. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have the money to, to make a website or anything like that. So yes, him in the, him in the early stages, very beneficial. I, I will say that. So I don't want to say um, because yeah, you know, he, he was useful. In, he was useful in those stages, but but he ma he maxed out. Right. And he was taking too much when he maxed out, and, that, okay. and that's where the Fair issue enough. comes in. Because you know you could honestly say, had you not hooked up with him, there is a chance that Funk Volume as a label may not have, never have happened. I would have still happened regardless. Like the Hobson would have happened, right? But funk but, volume, but funk is a label. volume because you know it's um, you know because when you, when you when you have a label, I mean it, it's it's two things if you're if you're a rapper and you, yeah. So mm -hmm. funk volume, he you know him staying on top of the Facebook posts and all that stuff and posting on Twitter and you know keeping keeping the maintenance or having somebody keep the maintenance up on the website and all that, yeah. That okay. Yeah. So uh, Dizzy actually defended. Damien and said that you overlooked all that he did for the label. Mm -hmm. You heard that? That that was a Facebook post that he made, correct? I believe so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you disagree with that? Completely disagree. I would tell you this: Dizzy knows nothing about what he's talking about with this situation, one hundred percent. And I would tell you why. Um, I'm going to use the McDonald's reference. What does the, if, if if things are going on behind the scenes with the McDonald's corporation? What does the cashier know? They they would they're not gonna, if if someone says McDonald's is poisoning these these people because of the fries and there's this toxin in the fries the cashier's not gonna know he's gonna be like bro I just get paid my paycheck mm -hmm. I don't D Dizzy Dizzy's never seen any of the the behind the scenes um state the state statements of the money that's been coming in or anything he's never seen that so how could he why, why so he so his opinion on this is completely irrelevant unless he's complete unless he's looked at the back end okay. at the back end and sat with the accountants and all this and seen what I've seen so I, but I but I and I'm just saying he, he doesn't he doesn't know so this is it because he he wasn't owner he wasn't owner of the of the label he didn't see what I saw it just okay. comes down to that so well businesses move and change and the industry changes and so forth mm -hmm. was there a point where you're like you know something I appreciate everything that was done up to this point but now the business is a little bit different your role is a little bit different uh, instead of 50-50, let's do this percentage instead, or let's maybe restructure things this way, where you take this, I take that, whatever else, as opposed to saying, yeah. funk volume's over, fuck mm -hmm. everybody. <laughs> well, no, the thing, the thing I, 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 didn't, I didn't just out the blue, I didn't, I didn't just reach the point where um, I just blew up like that. It, it wasn't, that's not what it was at all. So I was thinking of solutions. So in September, I, you know, I, I come to the conclusion that Damien was not the best manager for me. Okay. And especially with the money that he was getting, he, but he, he just wasn't, but it wasn't because of the money. It was just, it was more because of the moves. Yeah. 
now. And that happens a lot once artists get big. I mean, artists yeah. start out with one manager, they get to a certain point. Yeah, and it's know, just CAA comes in and says, "Okay, we'll we'll mm-hmm. handle it to the next stage." Here yeah, and and, so and it's just because you know I, I just I just felt like you know I was I was doing a lot and I wasn't, and I just felt like my career could be in a in a, a stronger place that it wasn't in, but I think you know he maxed out on what he what he could do for me. So, just the fact that I even brought up a new manager and for him to not only get defensive, start disrespecting me. That that's when it became an issue, and it was and it was on numerous occasions where he started doing this, and that's where, you know, that that hurt me that he would that he would say that because he not so his his reaction was when I said I want a new manager it was, um, what what is the new manager gonna do I don't I don't see how that's gonna help you and and you don't even work hard at all Hop you know this he 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 would tell me I don't work hard, and and he actually said in a in an interview that that's why he thinks that. Funk volume broke up because he told you that you don't work hard. Enough. No, but the, the thing is, if like, okay, what what would you do if I called you a name right now, and let's just say right now you're like, look, I get it, you're mad, hop, it's all good, and then I came back next week, did it again, and then you said, look, hop, you come on, bro, I'm trying to be cool with you, don't don't do that, and then th- third time, you're gonna either you're gonna punch me in the face, or you're gonna say you're never allowed in here ever again, don't you? It's gonna be one of those because you're a grown man and and I'm a grown man, so you're gonna and you're gonna look me in the eye, you're gonna say I've I've told you two. Other times, not to do this, and you've come in and, and you've done it. So, that clearly state that clearly means that you don't respect me. That okay. so it's not even a match. So I understand why you did it the first time. I was cool. I understood the second time, but now you did it in front of the whole crew, and it's the third time. And Dizzy Wright told you not to do it, and you still did it. So that means there's something in him that's like, I just gotta say it no matter. What. Like I just can't fight it. And because everybody knew that that was my breaking point, that that was going to be that my breaking point if he said it again, and. And he says it in such a tone that's just belittling. Like it's and it's not and it's not on some like I understand. I have homies who go, look, Hop, that song wasn't that song wasn't that dope. You could have went harder on it. I'm just giving my honest opinion. And sometimes you know it, it will hurt, but they but they say it in a in a in a way where it's trying to make me better. He 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 slapped me in the face, kicked me to the ground, spitting on me like that. That's what it was. So and I don't I don't need that. I don't need that energy around me. You know I don't I don't need that energy. So so and, you disagree? You feel that you do work hard enough? Oh, I I do work hard. I I I completely work hard. And and I know Dizzy's argument was saying maybe they meant it in a different way. If he said it on three occasions and he's not clear in which way he said it, and he just said, he just says that. Is it, I mean come on now what 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 do you, what do you want me to do? And the fact is. I'm I'm paying this guy's bills like in a, in a major way, and I'm not just giving him chump change. Like I'm. Well, he's a fifty fifty partner. No, 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 no. He's and he's, he, no, I didn't. Now we haven't gone into the, the 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 money that he's been taking. This is this is this is where it stems from. So the money that he's been, he 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 takes unfair amounts of money from me. That's what he's doing in the past. Even on the tour that we were doing, he would not pay the artists for the meet and greets that they did. We had the, we had meet and greets where. We, yeah, we, we do like 100 meet and greets every single day for like 60 days. And the artists weren't getting paid for these meet and greets at all. They were getting no money for the meet and greets. I mean, but what, were they being paid by the, the store or whatever to, to do the meet and greet? No. Okay. No, we, they're only getting paid the show money. Which right, was, exactly. Which was, yeah, oh, they, yeah, so they're getting, they're getting paid the show money. They're doing the meet and greets. Now, I was getting paid for the meet and greets, but no one was looking out for them. And you can, and the see, and what sucks about it all is that they're all gonna, they're all gonna stay quiet about it because they, they're all, they're playing the nice role. They're all gonna play the, oh, Dame is not because they don't they they don't under, they don't they don't get it. But that's not that's not the energy. I promise you, that's not the energy they had on tour. And I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar at all. These guys had completely different energy. Now they weren't talking about turning on Dame, but they were literally all of them were literally like, yo, if I'm not if I'm not getting paid for these meet and greets, I'm not doing it. Like if if he's, and and then I, I I told them the breakdown of the meet and greets, and they're like, what? And then and and to know that Dame was gonna get money from these meet and greets, and they weren't. Dave was getting money from the meet and greets. That's what. Yes, he was getting money from the meet and greets. Okay. This, which is which is completely ridiculous. Which is completely ridiculous because the, for the for him to be getting paid more money for them doing the meet and greets and he's and Dame is profiting off of this, completely ridiculous. Okay, so the label's done. Label's done. What's going to happen with the assets? Now that's still in the air right now. <laughs> that that's still in the air. We're we're trying to trying to figure that out. There's albums that are out. That are selling, that will you know if they get picked up and you know there's publishing associated with the albums. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you're not sure what's going to happen with that. 
Well, we're trying to figure out a split, but now this is the thing. The, the reason I, I didn't want to drop that Illmind 8 track, I wasn't going to do that. But as an artist, you know, when time goes by, I, I feel like, you know, my buzz is dying down. And I, I was aware that I can't really step back out into the world without people. The first question that, uh, that they would ask is just, what happened to Funk Volume? Mm -hmm. And for me to not be able to be vocal on that was going to bother me. So, but I, so I kept playing the game. I'm like, okay, January 1st comes, talking to the lawyers, like, look, we should have this thing done in, in, a, in a few weeks. I'm like, okay, cool. A few weeks passes. It's not settled. And, and this is all on his end. He, want, he wants to do the most. And I can understand why, because he, he knows that, I mean, I, I made 85, 90% of the money in the company. So he, he, he knows that if I'm gone, I mean, this is a, it's a serious thing in, in, his, in his life because, yeah, I mean, how is he, he going to make money? How is he going to make the type of money that he was making? So he has to, he, I mean, and he can do that through Dizzy Wright and, or Jaren Benton or whatever artist he gets, but, but so, it's gonna, he has to build that up, though. So he, he was stalling on it, and I, was, and I had no income. I had no, I mean, I, I have money, you know, I already have money saved up and everything, but I, was, I, I wasn't making any income at all off of merch, off of album sales, off of anything, off of YouTube. Nothing because that was all frozen. So every day just kept bothering me, and it, and it was making me more upset because I just wanted it to be over and done with. And the fact that it just kept dragging out was just pissing me off. So um, January went by, nothing was done. February went by, nothing was done. March comes around, I'm I'm upset now, and I had to do the ill mind eight thing. Okay, so so the artists. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared Benton and um, Dizzy Wright and Dizzy Wright and Swizz and Swizz, where are they going? Are they gonna go with him? Are they gonna go with you? Is it gonna be a new um, well, well, a new record label formed? Um, I don't know what they're doing over there. I have no idea. So they, I mean, they're 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 not they're not with me. So okay, um, so he, they're so, staying with him. I, I mean, but they're not. I'm not saying they're staying with him. I know Dizzy's staying with him. Dizzy okay. Steph is staying with him. Um, Jaren, he's kind of doing his own thing. Swizz, I mean, he wasn't really around too much like even when Funk Volume was around so I'm, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I, I offered my help out to all of them whether they just need funding for videos for tour just off of love even if even if you know I don't I don't even really care about you know um, making money off of them I just said look if you need if you need four or five thousand dollars ten grand to fund something just let me know I got you it's no it's no problem so and that that's just off of love off of just them being like my brothers so but yeah, they're, um, so Dizzy's rolling with Dame. Swizz, I don't know what he's doing. Jaren, he's doing his own thing. Um, but I, I always reach my hand out to them if they need it. But I wish he'd stop. I like Meek Mill, man. Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna- I work. wish he'd stop. Listen, I liked Meek Mill. But all of this shit is making you look bad, homie. I'm saying you used to wanna be Signed to Rockefeller, but then he turned into Jay. Oh yeah. I understand what he's saying, but you gotta understand how that could be took. Yeah, you're taking a shot at Jay Z. I mean, it, it, you could be taking a light you're shot take, at Jay. You're taking and, a shot at Jay. -Z. And, and hip hop be like, nah, bro, you ain't Jay. Yeah. You're Drake, which is fine. 